pleasure to welcome to the podcast Jessica Harklerode, uh, St. Leo's goalie, freshman of the year in the SSC, which we're going to talk about. But Jessica, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Well, I always like to start the show by hearing the story of when you first jumped into goal. Do you remember that? Yes, of course. So I was in second grade playing PAL. Um, our goalie got hurt and it was the, going into like the second half of the game and someone's like, someone's got to do it. Someone's got to step up. Uh, so I'm like, you know what? I can't run. So I'm going in that net. I went in the net, teared it up, had six saves. Uh, I was hyped up. And ever since that, I fell in love. Um, of course, it started out with like the com like communal, everyone sharing the goalie equipment. And fun fact, um, I actually got like a custom field player stick that for that game, like right before that game, I got a new stick, my name on it. All of a sudden I go home. I'm like, mom, I'm never going back to playing field. And that's really it. Uh, I was never a good runner. I would always had problems with my ankles since I was young and it stuck from there and I fell in love with it. Beauty. Beauty. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure your parents love to hear that. Right. I, right after you oh, get the yeah. custom stick. Um, yeah. not, not even to mention there's this whole other element of being the lacrosse goalie mom, I think adds and dad adds like a little bit more stress to the whole equation. Oh, as well. for sure. My mom <laughs> is, the, she, my mom hides in the bushes as she likes to say, yeah. she barely watches. That's, so. that's the key of one of, of lacrosse goalie moms is distance. But anyway, what do you think? I mean, so you make six saves right out of the gate and were they like, legit saves like moving to the ball or is it kind of like it hit me in the shoulder and what do you think I'm made, say, made you so good right out of the gate right I'm gonna say number one I think I was fearless mm. which was honestly good but I think it was at that age it's not there you're not seeing great shots yeah um I think it, I remember there were more like match like matching stick saves like I'd get up really high on the crease match my stick and then I felt so, you know, that feeling, I felt so good. And I was like, I want to feel that every time I play lacrosse. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. What do you yeah. think made you fearless? Did you, were you, were you playing other sports Did you kind of have some brothers? Maybe you, you played yeah. around with, what do you, what, what made you fearless? Do you think? Um, you know what? I never excelled. I, I was, I played soccer, volleyball, basketball throughout the years, field hockey, but by in second grade, I hadn't found my niche, my niche yet. I was kind of, you know, like, what am I going to do here? Am I going to play sports the rest of my life? My two older siblings, they play, they always played really good athletes. So I had a lot to carry. I'm the youngest child. So I think what made me fearless was, you know, after getting that one save, it's like, okay, I'm, I'm going to, I'm doing this thing. And I had the confidence and parents are cheering. They're like, what is happening right now? Jess is killing it. And I think that confidence booster of just like the first or second day, I'm like, I can do this and I'm not scared at all. Love so, it. So do yeah. you think, do you think if you would have made zero saves uh, that first game, you would not have stuck with it? For sure. 100%. <laughs> I think that that feeling of like adrenaline and like hearing everyone at, I just like that really what is what made me fall in love with the position. Love it. So yeah. um, I guess then your parents uh, succumbed to the fact that you wanted to be a goalie. Um, and then how did you go about then, you know, learning how to make saves in, in second grade? Did you take some camps some clinics? Where, where did it go from? There? Right. So my PAL coach, his daughter was about four or five years older than me, Emily Manning. She plays at Stony Brook. She's at her fifth year right now. She played Binghamton for four years. Now she's at Stony Brook finishing it off. But so she was always a couple of years ahead of me um, in Sayville. So he really knew what he was talking about. Huge lacrosse guy. And, you know, he would work with me uh, as well as the assistant coach. Like I once I said, you know what, this is what I want to do. Um, my coach kind of took the wheel, took the lead and, I'd say third grade is when I tried out for Yellow Jackets. He got me to try for Yellow Jackets, and from there it kind of just went on. But my, I would say my PAL coach really had the biggest influence on, you know, like learning how to step, learning how to do just the generic things that you're learning mm -hmm. in the beginning. That really all came from my coach, 
my parents knew nothing about the sport at the time. So. Oh, interesting. What do you recommend to parents in that scenario? Sort of listening to this saying, well, I I'm same boat, right? My kid wants to be the goalie or my kid wants to play lacrosse and I don't even know. I don't even know what's going on. I've never played. I've seen a couple games. What do you recommend to those parents to support their goalie? I'm going to say the biggest thing is to learn about the sport a little bit, but also seeing that excitement from their kids and them coming to them saying, you know, mom and dad, this is what I want to do. I think they have to have full support of it. It could be very scary at times, and that's why goalie moms and dads are the way they are. But I think just off the bat, you have to be supportive, and you have to like see that have the confidence in them to be able to do this. So I think learning more about the sport, getting more involved. Um, I think it was really nice when I first started out, my dad, would like talk to my coach, learn about, because my dad played division one basketball in college. He knew this is all new to him. So right. I think learning about it, but also say, also not saying, you know what, to the kid, you're not doing this, this you're going to get hit, like bad injuries could happen from this instead, you know, supporting them on this journey and realizing how good of a position they could be in. Yeah. I love that. Um, keep going on. Let's keep going on that topic a little bit, because I think it's very important. I, to, you know, to your yeah. point, you just made, like you can learn the sport, right? And maybe you don't learn the details of like why I would do with three, two, one offense versus a two, two, two versus, you know, like that level, but you can certainly learn at a high level, like how the sport works. So, so do yeah. that. Right. Um, and then, you know, you can learn a little bit about the goalie position and to your other point, like a lot of this, a lot of what parents can really help with is just the, that hype and helping them through, uh, the emotions that come with lacrosse goalie, right? I mean, I'm sure on yeah. your journey, you've had some times where you've just been down and out. Have, were your have, were your parents able to help you through that? And if so, like how how did they do it? I'd say helping me when I'm down. This was hard for my mom, especially she didn't really play sports um, as she got older. So this was a hard position for her because you know she was always nervous, and yeah, I'd say. The thing that helped me the most was my dad, you know, having my back and not being scared and being confident in me. Because one thing I will say is that even still, and if my mom watches this, she's going to be mad that I said this, but <laughs> she, she will admit that she really doesn't want, like she, she gets so nervous that she'll turn her head and like wait for the applause or wait for the, oh, like in the stands because she gets nervous. But I think as a young goalie, especially like, you need your parents there from day one on the sidelines being like, let's go oh, cheering you on. You got this. Um, I think even if you are nervous inside as a parent, keep it to yourself because yeah. that's only going to, that's not, that's only just going to make your kid more scared and more nervous to play well. It's contagious, right? It's contagious. Those emotions are contagious. I know if I looked on the sideline and I see my, my mom and she's a nervous wreck, then all of a sudden, like, you know, it's contagious. Yeah. And, I, and I feel that way too. And I know many goalies, specifically say mom go go hide in the bushes as, as you said earlier right yeah um, it's so, so that, true yeah so you don't pick up on that nervous energy but yeah you know to your point um i know yeah. a lot of i know a lot of parents have like little signals like little you know maybe like mm -hmm. flush the toilet or like you know tapping of the head to help yeah. your goalie reset so just little things that you can do lots of stuff you can do if you don't know the position so yes yeah like that Awesome. What do, what do you would you say then is your favorite thing about being the goalie? Oh, this is a good question. Um, I'm going to say my favorite thing about being the goalie is you know, I like the pressure. I'm big on playing well under pressure. Um, I think coming up with a, a save to win a game will always overpower the feeling of having a goal. And I strongly believe that I, I think the reason I love being the goal, a goalie the most is the feel like the adrenaline and the feeling I get after having a good game, making a sick save. I mean, I've never felt something like it before. And I think that overrides any other reason why I also like being a goalie. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. It's that feeling, that feeling of making a save. It's just, just nothing yeah. like it. Yeah. How did you, mm -hmm. you said, you said that you've always liked 
the pressure, right? You like that's yeah. something that you've embraced. A lot of goalies are not like that. You know, the 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 pressure kind of gets gets to them. What you know, what tips do you give to those those goalies who might not be so naturally inclined to embrace the pressure like you? Yeah. I would say a big thing I say to myself is, okay, this is my this is my job. Like my job is to get this save. If the, if we're in a tie game, my job is to get this save, get the ball out, and for us to score. And in the back of your head, I remember if I'm going to let this ball in and we're going to lose the game, that had to get through. I know this is so generic, but that had to get through at least 11, 10 other girls to get to my spot. So, yeah, in that when you're in that mindset, you have to remember you are coming out as the champ on top if you do make that save. But at the same time, if you don't, that's not only on you and you have to remember that. And I think that brings that that confidence of, okay, this is not my fault if I let the ball in right now. Um, yeah, it would suck if it you tipped it and it went in. But mm-hmm. overall, you just have to have that confidence. And if you don't believe in yourself in pressure situations like that, then you're not going to be successful. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, I like it. Yep. Yeah, that works for that that works for a lot of people just that that understanding that it is a team game, right? It is a team game and and so many goalies um they're just too hard on themselves. Right? They say I, things I, I myself, yeah. Are you you're you're too hard on yourself? Like how did you how does that um talk to me about that if you could. Yeah. In high school I played travel across and I once it began like ninth grade and it became more real, I was didn't have com- nearly as much confidence as I have now. Um, if I made one mistake, I'd be crying in my parents' car in between games. I was a wreck. I would like, I would say, building that confidence of knowing who you are like makes such such an impact. Mm. But getting through, being hard on yourself is like it really doesn't help you at all in the long run. And I think if I'm being honest, that came with time over anything. The only advice I could give people is you need to under, when you fully understand the game and you fully realize there are other people on the field, like there is also another goalie feeling the same way as you are. So being hard on yourself is really only going to make you play worse. And in high school, I was on varsity for three years I would be smashing my stick. I would I would have tears through under my helmet. I was a wreck. Once I got to college, I kind of realized this is a team sport. This is getting mad at myself is only going to get me more in my head, which makes you play worse. My mentality now that I would suggest that everyone gets would be you you make the, you miss a save that is not affecting your future or one goal should really not affect the entire rest of the game. Yeah. This took, this took me so many years to figure out because I was mad at myself for for so many games. I'm down on myself. I show up to practice the next day. I I saying I suck. Now I'm at practice. Let a goal in. Okay. That's over. Offense is supposed to score. I think goalies kind of forget that goalies think that I mean we're in a position where the people going against us should be getting the ball past us so if we do make that save that's an advantage um I think people really forget that so overall being down on yourself isn't going to get you anywhere and find Mm -hmm. something else find something else to use your time after you let a goal in and stay positive I mean once you get down on yourself, then you get down on your defense. You make them, you give your tone right onto them. Then they're going to play bad. They're going to get in their heads. And goalies have to remember, like, when you're down on yourself. Your entire team sees that. And it's it's not going to make any situation better. And it's just not helpful. Yeah, man, that was a great answer. Yeah, really, <laughs> Thank you. Know, really, really a lot of great points right there. And I hope... The young goalies take that to heart. Um, 
Yeah, I, I just I just think that a lot of young goalies like they're way they're way too hard on themselves. And and For sure. you know, there's a lot of like great moments that happen in a game. And yet, like what do you what do you focus on when you're back in that car, right? It's oh, it's that one I should have had. And so a lot of times you yep. miss you miss those positive experiences, you know, by by getting so mad at yourself at that one at the one I should have had because we lost by one goal. And if only I would have had that last that last save, right. we could have won. And so you know, a lot of times these young goalies will say things to themselves that one are not true, right? So that's mm-hmm. kind of the first gauge. Like you're saying, like, if only I would have had that last one. Well, probably not true because it is a team sport. Um, of course. And then saying things that are just super cruel, right? Like things that you would never oh, say yeah. to a teammate, um, you say to yourself. So yeah, I like that idea of keeping it, of keeping it positive. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if the attackers thought every time they hit a post or every time they missed the net, that that was their fault that we lost the game. Right. That's exactly the same way. Yeah. The other thing that you mentioned at the beginning there is kind of like, you know, knowing yourself, kind of getting comfortable with yourself. And it's, it's something that I was um, reading about uh, earlier this week. And it's, that's a really good way to deal with like criticism as well, because the person it was a, it was a video right and he was saying like Jessica imagine if i came to you and i and i started making fun of your blue hair right like your blue mm. hair your blue hair is so ugly like it's horrible it looks looks atrocious like how do you yeah. feel you're like wait a minute like i don't have blue hair right but you don't feel anything you don't feel anything because exactly. you don't have blue hair and it's the same idea if somebody says something like oh you're a you're a bad goalie right right you're not going to feel that you're not going you shouldn't feel that from anything because you know the truth it's just Mm -hmm. like i don't have blue hair i don't feel it i'm not a bad goalie why would i why would i be mad that someone called me a bad goalie exactly yeah it this happens i mean this happens in all the time even uh with like team feedback or team like a teammate's feedback or any coach's feedback like it's so funny that you made that point because in the past in high school when i was younger jv i would if a coach did give me criticism like that, I was not, I didn't know myself enough to not to say, no, you're wrong. I know that mm. I am good at that. Now me and my coach go at it all the time. We battle on the field when she's warming me up and she'll be like, Oh yeah. Yeah. You suck at that. I'm like, no, I don't. <laughs> or like, she'll, she'll yeah. go back and forth. We'll talk shit with each other and she'll, um, We'll battle back and forth. I'm like nothing. You're nothing. You're saying is getting in my head because I know who I am as a goalie. Yeah. So yeah, I love that. So true. That. Yeah, cool. So when you're growing up um, in New York, you know, are there are there specific? Do you watch like college lacrosse, high school lacrosse? Are there some goalies pro lacrosse? Are there some goalies that that you really kind of looked up to and like to learn from? Yeah. Um. For a while, I I didn't watch college. I didn't get much into it. I mean, I always. I always said to myself, like, uh, I'm going to play at Duke. I'm going to, like, I was always joke around saying I'm going to play at these amazing D1 schools. Um, but as time really went on, I will go back to Emily Manning. She was the goalie, like, four years older than me. So she was on varsity when I was on JV. When I was in middle school, she was on varsity. I really looked up to her. Like, she was always good. And you know, I was a little bit jealous, I'm going to say at first, because her dad was so involved. He was the one that was my PAL coach. He was so involved, and he knew what he was talking about, and he understood the game so well, and I love that bond they had with each other. But looking up to Emily, I mean, I tried to follow her, her college career, and now she's. I think she's going to make a big impact on the field at Stony Brook uh, coming up in a couple of weeks. So, okay. all right, got to get on. Yeah. Got to get on the show. Got to get Emily on For the show. Real. Yeah, <laughs> he's great. Awesome. Um, talk to me about you know you, you you mentioned oh I wanted to play at Duke. What was was D D one lacrosse ever um, something you considered? And and talk to me about why you know you end up choosing St. Leo. Okay, so. Yes, I always wanted to play Division One. Um, since I was in third grade, I'm like my Yellow Jackets coach was played at Duke at the time. I'm like I'm gonna play where you were. Uh, time went on. That fantasy got pretty old. Um, by ninth, tenth grade, I started to evaluate myself more. And as I was going through the recruiting process, it was also COVID. Mm. So that really 
uh, minimalized my what the coaches saw of me. Right. At the time, I really didn't have that much film. So I was really relying on that junior year summer to get some bites and get some calls. But that summer was entirely canceled. So I relied on people shooting on me, record, recording people shooting on me at practice, stuff like mm. that, yeah. which really was a, a big downfall to begin with. But during the process, as I was, e I was emailing about a couple division one schools at first, and I was thinking to myself, what do I want for my future? And where do I want to, see, where do I see myself? And as the time went on, I wasn't getting opportunities or calls that I wanted. And I said to myself, you know what, what, what would be the hurt of emailing a couple division two schools? See what they say. Um, email the division two schools, a lot of schools in this conference. And, you know, they, they got right back to me. They said, come down for a visit. I came down, I visited uh, three schools at the time and immediately fell in love. Mm. The pressure of the pressure of playing division one is such a, such a scary thing nowadays, especially because everyone just wants that post on Instagram, put it up. I'm verbally committed. Um, but I will say I felt so much pressure. I, I played on uh, Top Guns. I was on the black team and there were, let's say 25 girls on my team, 23 of them or 22 of them are playing division one. And I was mm -hmm. one of the last ones to commit. So that pressure of me showing up to practice and telling everyone where I'm going, that was huge. Mm -hmm. But you have to know what you want to do. A lot of people don't consider what they want to do in the future, where what climate they want to be in. That was huge for me. A lot of the Division One schools I was looking at were freezing cold. I was like, I know myself. I can't play in that. Yeah. Florida, there isn't many Division One women's lacrosse programs. And – I'm in a very competitive, I would say one of the most competitive division two programs here at St. Leo. And it was a hard, it was definitely a hard thing to come out to everyone and say, I'm playing division two. Um, but now I couldn't imagine myself being anywhere else. Awesome. And I think the competition here and the, the people here, and that's really what matters the most. Yeah. Well said. Very well said. Yeah. When you get there, um, you just wrapped up your freshman season, so you're heading into your sophomore season. When you get there, would you say that your goalie game changed at all? And if so, how? When I got here last year? Mm -hmm. I'm going to say I just got I got better with time. Um, I'd say I definitely adjusted a few things. Um for example, when I first got here, I would play with my stick and I was holding my stick. I'd have my head tilted back a little bit. Oh, so yeah. in my stance, I'm here and my head is back. So I was going dipping on a lot of these fast shots I wasn't used to. Mm -hmm. And that was a huge adjustment for me. And it's made real a real big impact. Um, but changing who I am as or changing the way I speak, the way I am a leader, that never changed. Yeah. I got here off the bat, and, like, advice I could give anyone is when you're a freshman, be the loudest voice. Don't let anyone – don't – don't who cares if people judge you. Be yourself. I mean, I'm a very loud speaker in the net um, and just in general. When I showed up to practice the first day, I'll never forget – never forget I got MVP. I was speaking the whole time. I was – I was talking to fifth year grad grad teammates who <laughs> who know so much more than me, but I was still a voice on the field, and I think that's one of the things my coach really loved about me off the bat. So I think no, not a lot changed. A few minor tweaks, like the one I told you. Yeah. Um, but I think with college, it's really just adjusting to the speed of shots, speed of the game. That's yeah. the biggest yeah. change you're gonna see. I feel like. Cool. Just on that technique tip that you gave. So do you, I know some goalies even go so far as to kind of go like angled forward just a little bit. Are you sort of more now vertical as opposed to angled? Yeah, angled I'd back? say I'm much, much more vertical. I think it helps with every type of save as well. Yeah. When your stick is back, 
if you're going for a six side high, you have to like nod your shoulder up to begin with and then push right. out. Right. You're already if you're already here, you're just nudging out with your hands and yeah. following with your legs, obviously. But that's like a major thing. Even with bounce shots, because if you're if you're here and you have to get down and twist your entire stick to be comfortable, right? Straight. It's uncomfortable and it's it takes much more time to get to the ball. So yeah, hundred percent. I highly recommend all the goalies film themselves um, and look at that tape because yes. it's so like if you slow it down and watch it kind of frame by frame, it's so obvious. Like, am I making a direct movement to the ball, or am I going yeah. down and then there? Am I going down right. and then there? Am I hitching? Am I going there? Because um, you, you got to get that out, right? You got to get that out of your game. Like you're going to make more saves if you can just go directly to the ball as opposed For to sure. two movements. We were just, I literally was just doing that. We did eight meters two days ago. And I was like, I said to my assistant, I'm like, can you film me right now? I want to see. And you could tell every save that I had, I was stepping not only to the ball, but to the girl shooting. So I was always square to them. And you can tell on the ones I didn't, it's either minor movement that I'm doing. I'm either dipping or not, or not stepping the right way or stepping out. Um, I think videoing yourself is a great tool to use when you're trying to tweak your game a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. How else do you, um, do you, do you watch a lot of video? Is that, is that uh, like not only of yourself, but kind of uh, how do you use video specifically? Um, specifically, uh, for step, uh, uh, as well as something I changed last year was my stepping. I, oh. and I'm, that's like the kind of one thing I'm uh, tweaking a little bit right now as well. I'm five ten, So I have really long legs mm -hmm. and I tend to step too much and I miss the ball because I'm stepping so far. I need to make smaller steps, which I'm now doing. It's helping a lot. But I'd say when I use video, it's really for those little things. I'll have someone either, even if my teammates are shooting on me after practice, I'll have someone video uh, next to the cage. So you can see me on this from the side. Mm -hmm. And when you, there's nothing like watching yourself. I remember last year I had my assistant coach, she videoed and my stepping and I was punching my arms. My arms were too far out. I was like, my, my arms were locked when I'm standing almost so that when I'm stepping to the ball, I don't have any power with my stick because I'm just holding it here. Right. I literally watched that video, had someone else shoot on me six side high and bam, like it changed so fast. Like once right. you see it and you feel it, you're like, wow like that was such a difference totally totally yeah, yeah. and I, I bet you know when you have your arms locked out and the shot comes in you probably see in the video like the first thing that happens is like you sort of relax them and then and then go to the shot yes right? that's the yes movement. exactly right mm -hmm. i see that too a lot of times a lot of goalies have their i don't know how you set up but a lot of goalies have their hands a little bit too high in their stance you know, everything else is yeah. great, right? But the hands are just a little too high. And then when the yes. shot comes in, what happens? Like they bring it back to a, a, sort of a more you dip. neutral, relaxed position and you dip and then you go get it. So why not yeah. just start right there? Right. That's yeah. that's definitely a, a difficult thing to change your stance. And I know goalies go back and forth whether they should or not. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like go with your gut because I will like the way you brought up uh, having your stick too high. Uh, I tend to want to do that because I'm like, how are these people getting me stick side high? Like maybe if I hold my stick, but that's just giving you a disadvantage for low shots. So really right. you could keep it. Right. But, awesome. Um, what would you say you're working on in your goalie game right now? Is there a specific element that, you know, that, that you're really focused mm -hmm. on? Five holes. Five holes. Is my biggest thing right now. When I was younger, the shots weren't as fast and five holes was like, oh, that's it. That's an easy save. Yeah. Now in college, it's the one thing, again, like I said, I'm tall. So those have been getting me recently. And I, I've been, I feel so strong everywhere else. But so many times I catch myself, catch myself just getting my stick there and not getting that continuous step to the ball how I want to. So I'm actually doing a drill at practice today with my coach to just get familiar with the movement and, you know, figure out why that's happening. 
Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Um, and I think a lot of times it's, it's, mu it's a muscle memory thing, right? And you just go out there and get the oh, reps. Yeah. I don't know. Are there specific drills that you would do or, or is it just a matter of like, Hey, shoot 500 five hole shots on me? Yeah, no, uh, specific drill I do is, um, have someone with a tennis racket and tennis balls yeah. and just slam them in from like <laughs> five, five feet out. Yeah. Um, and I think during that process of doing that, feeling what picking what foot do i want to step with do a lot of goalies say to you they pick what because a lot of the time you have a bounce shots on the left or right you're obviously going to step with that foot but in the middle do goalie have goalies said to you before like i know what i I picked what foot i'm always going to step with for a five hole like that's what i'm really trying to figure out right now i don't think you need to move i don't think you need to step on a five hole I think you just go down and if you want, you maybe can drop you should talk to my coach. Yeah, maybe I think, you should talk uh, yeah that's, to that's coach. my theory. I, I think, I don't think uh, it makes sense. If the ball's coming right at you, like why would I move towards it? Right. Why not just get focus on getting down, dropping your butt, right. to the dropping your butt to the ground. Um, I'm not like all the way to the ground, but like just lowering your hips. Or I even know some goalies kind of come down with, you know, one knee to, you, you know what yeah. I mean? To kind of get to block it down. Well, that's why I'm feeling so uncomfortable because stepping, it's just a weird right. step. Right, 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 right. But I also know that a lot of goalies have this mindset of like, I got to step, I got to step, I got to step. And yes. the ball comes and it's like, all right, I stepped. But yeah, I don't know. I feel like five hole, you don't step. Yeah, that's what I, and that's how I've been making the saves. Um, when I do, but my, my coach will tell me to step. I almost like, put, I'll put my stick down right away and then I'll step to like either side because i'm like there's nowhere to set my sticks there right so yeah yeah, the yeah other thing you can play around with too um where are my sticks the other thing you can play around with is you know there's some goalies that on those stick side on those stick on those five holes get the stick like all the way vertical right like to to make the save like that the other thing you can play yeah. around with is just dropping the stick like to the ground but keeping it um sort of parallel to the ground right because I, I don't know right I, that's how i would make the saves and i think it's a lot lot quicker of a movement as opposed to okay. coming all the way around because i always thought right. that, i always thought that like let's say you want to make a, a a low save and i just use my bottom hand right i take mm -hmm. i take my top hand off like how would you make the save i probably wouldn't go like like that right <laughs> like i would probably right. just come down like this um, True. so i don't know you know, it's, it's something to work on. And I always tell goalies that, you know, try, try out different things, kind of see what works for you. Yeah, I definitely will try that out because cool. that does take a, a more time to turn your stick right. on. Right, right. I and find it, even, yeah, even for um something else I just did was I was missing so many off stick mid shots mm -hmm. that I'm like, mm -hmm. what, why is that happening? All I did was I'm going over the top for a lot more of them. And it's made me have so many more saves off stick. Wow. That's so funny that you mentioned that. Cause that's something that I was just um, making a reel about. I think that going over the top is the way to go. 100%. Uh, <laughs> 100%. Yeah. Unless because... it is, unless it's near your knee and you got to get that low and you can't go all the way. Yeah. I think you should bend your knees and stay high i yeah I, sure. I used to, like when i first um started coaching i used to say like it doesn't matter like just like your top hand goes straight to the ball yeah. whether you kind of go under or whether you go over the top like it's the same deal but yeah mm -hmm. i i now i mean, there's even videos of me saying that and i now think that over the top is a much better way to go it's it's because there's so many um like drills that you can do to like stay square to the ball like as you go underneath like a lot yes. of right but as soon as i go underneath like my shoulder wants to go back that way it's kind of just this natural yeah. movement as opposed to like if i go over the top like i'm i'm just i'm so square um right a lot of reasons but yeah over the top i also right. find it much easier to punch out to the ball when yeah. you're staying high when you're low you're you want to step sideways almost because you have to get your stick there yeah, I think with when you keep your stick high, you can explode all the way. Yep, over so. the top, over the top. Yep, for sure. And you get the added bonus. There's also a uh, a really old movie with Sylvester Stallone about arm wrestling called Over the Top, where he like that's mm -hmm. kind of his his thing. He yells like Over the Top, 
and you get yeah. to yell that. You get to yell that as you make it. So I don't know. Just a that's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so impressive freshman season. I mean, not I don't know how many goalies you had on the roster, but you earned the starting job. Um, and mm -hmm. then end up getting freshman of the year, I think second in save percentage in the league. I mean, congrats on a great freshman season. You know, why do you think you were able to yeah. have so much success like year one? Yeah. Uh, I'd say I've had great coaches over the years and everyone's made such an impact on me. But I think the confidence and belief that my coach had in me really made such a significant difference. I was I was never nervous when I stepped on the field that, oh, if I'm if I don't get the save right now, I'm gonna be yanked out. Or if I don't make the save, my coach is gonna scream at me from the sidelines. Like mm. she when I when I was talking to her in a bunch of meetings before our season last year, she said, just like these are awards that you you should be getting this year. And I believe you should be getting them. And my whole motivation was, you know what? Let me, as a freshman, step up to the plate. My teammates believe in me. My my teammates are always feeding me compliments, telling me like, they respect me, um, which is which makes such an impact when you know that your teammates trust you. I mean, I had I had two grad assistants, one from Marquette that transferred here last year, and one that uh, not grad assistants, grad students that played with me, and one that stayed here, and then I had two captains on the defense as well as another senior. So knowing that they trusted a goalie behind them meant more than anything to me. Uh, so all of those things combined, they really, you know, made me step up to the plate and have that confidence. I, confidence, I can't express enough how it goes such a long way. Yeah. Oh, it's key. I mean, I mean especially for goalies. It's, it's key. I remember – I don't know if it was the first or second week of play. I had gotten player of the week for our conference. And that was, you know, that was like, all right, that's pretty cool. I was the first player on our team to get it of the year. Mm. And then a week or two after I got, um, I think I got IWL today player of the week. And I was in the USA women's lacrosse magazine. And that was like, that was a confidence booster for sure. But at the same time, that getting uh, accolades can either make you confident or make you more nervous to play better. Mm -hmm. But I think during that time, that's kind of what I needed as a freshman. Like, okay, I have my swag now. Like, I'm mm -hmm. going into the next mm -hmm. games. Um, but, yeah, I mean, going back to the point about, I don't know if it's confident or not, like, like this year, you know, I definitely feel some pressure. Like, I made a big impact on the field last year. Um, I was noticed for it. And now I have to do that all over again. So well, you love the pressure. For sure. I'm excited <laughs> for it. Let's go. Yeah. Um, that's such a great point about the coaches sort of giving you that confidence. Cause I've talked to a lot of goalies and they say exactly what you said. Like I was playing thinking that if I have a bad game, or if I have a bad quarter, like I'm coming out, Yep. I'm going to get pulled. And, mm -hmm. um, that's, that's a, like an added level of pressure. I don't, that and like mental, um, weight that a goalie doesn't need. Right. So like giving them that confidence that like, Hey, you have a little bit of, of room, a little bit of leeway right. to, to mess up. I uh, just go out there mm -hmm. relax, have fun. I think helps yes. the goalie out tremendously. And it sounds like that was the case for you. For sure. I mean, if you're going into the game thinking, if I let this first and second goal in, I'm getting yanked you're not making those first and second saves. And even if you don't, there should not be pressure there. I'd say for any coaches that are watching this, there there should never be a weight on a goalie's shoulders. They have so much more responsibility on the field to make saves and to do their job instead of worrying about if they're going to be yanked after letting in a good goal, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I played travel across, and one of the things was I'd, I'd let in one or two, and – if I didn't step to your right or, you know, make that save, I was yanked. And that that pressure definitely had an impact on my game for sure. Yep. Um, I was reading that you in this upcoming season were elected team captain. Congratulations yes. on that. And thank you. What do you think? Um what do you think are some of the attributes of a great team captain? There's a lot. Uh, uh -huh. I'm gonna start off with Staying, 
Uh, staying a good teammate, even though you're supposed to keep people in line and keep them in check and kind of sometimes be the mean one. That's a very hard thing to balance as a captain. Um, but I think it's also important because I could have a loud voice. I could be rude. I could call people out. But at the same time, they're still my teammates. And I'm looking to lead them in a positive way and to use a name, like use captain as a reason to do that with my teammates just wouldn't be right. So I think there's so many good things about being a captain. I mean, I'm a sophomore. I'm still learning. Um, this is a very new position, a very new thing for me. I was a captain in high school, but it's a whole different ball game in college. Right. Um, I also just think it's important to, yes, you have your captain roles, but you have to be good with yourself first. Like, you have a lot of responsibilities as a captain, you know, staying positive, showing up at practice, getting everyone hype, organizing things, sending out texts, reminding people. But at the same time, I have to remember my goal is to be making saves and getting the ball out of the net. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a huge thing for captains. Um, yeah, I also think as a captain, you have to stay positive. When there's, when there's bad times and you're on the line, you're running sprints, you can't be that person to be like, oh, another one. You can't be yeah. slacking. Like anything you do as a captain reflects onto your teammates and yeah. kind of shows them, okay, if the captain does that, then I can do it type thing. Yeah. So it's definitely a really weird balance. I mean, if you're comparing it to real life, like when your parents do something, but you're not allowed to do it, you're like, why that? Where's the, what's happening here? Right. So, uh, heck, where's the consistency? Same. Yeah, exactly. So I think that the main thing about being a captain is staying, staying true to yourself first and being okay with yourself and then tackling all those responsibilities. Love it. Love it. Good tips. Um, yeah. I mean, you're just, you're just a, a, so, a sophomore, right? And mm -hmm. they've elected you captain. So how, how do, how would you say you as a freshman were able to earn like that level of trust and like have that level of leadership? Cause I think a lot of goalies come onto the team and they don't, they feel like, Oh, you know, like I'm just a freshman. I can't be a leader. What, what would you say, right. you know, for, for goalies in that, you know, in that scenario, that situation? Yeah. I mean, like I said, coming off, coming out off the bat, high energy, loud voice, being confident, getting crazy loud when I make a good save. Uh, I think that all contributes to it. Um, I think once your team sees who you are and sees the way you play, they have that trust in you. Mm -hmm. um, being voted captain this year, I had a significant amount of votes uh, from the team and as well as my coach. But I think last year just – the way I was consistent, the way I acted as acted as almost a captain, even though I wasn't, and I was so young, I think people see that and they're like, oh, okay. Like she knows what she's doing. She knows what she's talking about. And I'd say more than half my – yeah, more than half my teammates voted for me this year. So clearly they had the trust in me and the confidence in me to fulfill the position. Um, I will say, like, this is definitely a hard – it, was, it wasn't a hard decision if I wanted to be a captain or not, but it was definitely a hard mental thing to tackle because I'm only a sophomore. I'm in right. my second year of college. I'm academically, I've barely started my classes for my major. So I'm in, I'm in a new position, but I think gaining this one year of captain will make me such a better captain in the next two years that of I wasn't scared at all to be a sophomore captain. Awesome. Well, congrats. Congrats. Thank um, you. Cool. Um, let's see. What about a slump? Have you ever gone through a slump in, in your career? And if so, like, what did you do to overcome that? Uh, I'm going to say I was going through a slump kind of during 10th grade, 11th grade. Um, I wasn't exceeding as well as the other goalie on my travel team mm. for my school team. I was the only goalie, so that wasn't a problem, but 
I wasn't exceeding as well as the other goalie on my team. And that was such pressure for me because uh, I had joined, Ta I left Yellow Jackets going into ninth grade and joined Talk Guns Black. Um, so that was already an adjustment adjustment for me. And then getting there and trying to be just as good as the other goalie that was on my team was definitely caused me to be in a slump. Um, I never competed for playing time. So like splitting a game or not playing at all was a very what made me in a dark place for sure. Cause mm. I just wasn't used to it. Right. Um I'd say the main way to get main way to get out of it is Again, like, I'm just going to go back to this point of you. I wasn't confident in myself. I was not. I didn't look at someone shooting and be like, I'm going to make that save. I know I can make this save. And that is what was leading me down that disaster because I had people, my coaches telling me, giving me critiques, my teammates giving me critiques. And then upon myself, like you went said in the beginning, like, if they're saying that to you and I'm going to believe what they're saying and thinking, yeah, I do suck. I can't make that save. Uh, that's just going to keep you down. So I think what happened was I had a really good junior high school season. So going into that summer, I was ready to go. I was hyped up. Um, I was committed to college. So that summer of lacrosse really was what got me out of that slump because I was more confident. I knew myself better as a goalie. Um, as long as I knew where I was going to college, like that was a big thing in the back of my head for a while mm -hmm. uh, when I was in that slump. So I'd say when you're in a slump as a goalie, the biggest thing to do is dive deep into yourself. Like don't, don't think well into all the, don't think all into the critiques, into the, what you have to do better. Like, you just have to talk to yourself, dive deep into what this real reasoning is that you can't overcome this. And I think you'll learn a lot about yourself during that time as well. Interesting. So I think, yeah. 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 And I, it's a huge, it's a huge learning moment. Like, cause I mean, you know, you got a lot of lacrosse left in your career and I, I bet you're going to go through a slump again. Right. And now that you've sort of got, um, now that you've gotten over that one slump, you're like, Hey, I've been here before. I know what this right. is. I know how to get out of it. And that's a, that's a big skill. Mm -hmm. to learn. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Awesome. Um, well, very cool. Like I said, good luck in this upcoming season. Um, are your Thank games you. televised? Can we, can we watch you play somehow? How do, how do, how do we watch yeah. the, the SSC? So once you go on to, uh, once you go on to the St. Leo schedule for this year, yeah. there'll be a TV icon next to like the stats icon. So you'll click on that toggle of the TV and it will pull up all the games, but it will pull up that game once it starts. Oh, I love it. Okay. I'm on there right now. So you, you guys got Alabama Huntsville game number one. And I just click on this little yeah. t TV right here. Yeah. Oh yeah. And it goes on to and YouTube. That'll bring you to it. Oh, and you got, yep. you got games on there already. Yeah. All right, cool. So if we we're going to do uh, a save edit from last game, what do you think is your best, your best game, your favorite game? Oh, uh, last game. I'm going to say I had a, yeah, I had a really good game against Seton Hill. Okay. Talk to last me about that year. game. That was a, that was a game where we had never beaten them before, if I'm correct. Mm -hmm. And, uh, obviously it's my first year playing. So I'm like, let me be the difference. Like, let me be the reason why St. Leo will finally beat this team. And I went out there. Well, I had a couple saves going in the first quarter. I'm like, let's go. Let's do this. And that wave just took over the rest of the game. And that was pretty sick. So, That's awesome. That is awesome. Yeah. Well, Jessica, thank you so much for coming on the show. Um, I, I love your attitude. Love your positive energy. Wishing you tons of success uh, in this upcoming season. And um, if you had to leave the goalies out there with a, with a final piece of advice, what would that be? Uh, if I had to give advice to uh, goalies out there, I think the number one thing I'd say is when you let a goal in, don't let that even stay in your mind for more than one second. 
if you have to write something on a piece of tape and put it on your shoe and look down and say, okay, next play, do it. But that's my number one thing. When you're in a game, when you let a goal in, maybe it was your fault. Maybe it hit off your leg and went in. Forget about it. It's not the end of the world. And have the, a good rest of the game. That's all I really have to say. There you go. Very well said. Jessica, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Absolutely.